going to try this again. It's it's a tricky topic, and I'm waiting for a video to upload, so I'm going to try to try to keep this uh, short. Uh, and and Phil DeFranco did a video on it today that I thought was was very well put very well put together. Uh, internet celebrity. It's a weird thing. Uh, and it's a weird thing as a guy who I, I go out, I can go to the mall and I have people going, hey, you're the hockey guy. Yep. It never, it's, there's never a moment where it's not weird. There's never a moment where uh, I run into somebody and, and they, hey, I watch your channel, I watch your videos. And that a part of my brain doesn't say, wait, what? Really? And I, I wonder how many other YouTubers have that where they never really get used to it. Where you're always sort of like kind of feel weird about it and it's it's not a bad weird it's not it's not that you feel creeped out or bothered it's not that i i i you know somebody somebody says hey you're the hockey guy and i go oh really here no i i don't do that um there are, you know nine times out of ten unless i'm really tired or unless you know if on and i are out with the kids and the kids are driving me nuts um you know any other time i am you know happy about it i think it's great running into people who are fans of my channel and it, it helps me, and especially early on, it really helped me um, to, to feel more confident in the content I was putting out there. But I don't think the media gets it. I think, I think the media wants something that they can measure. Even Netflix, you can measure. Netflix, you have series that are canceled, new series picked up, uh, certain actors that are involved, certain actors that aren't. I think the media wants something you can measure. And with YouTube, you really can't. Like, I've got a channel with almost 69,000 subscribers right now. And am I well-known in YouTube circles? Absolutely not. But is it my job? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, with, with the right amount of work and, and with me being willing to put in that work every single day, I know it can continue to grow. I don't take any of it for granted. I know at some point in time it's going to level off. I know I could see numbers fall, sort of like what I was talking to, uh, talking about yesterday with the ebbs and flows of YouTube. Or not yesterday, I think it was the day before. Anyways, you guys know what I mean. Um, and and it's it's not something I take for granted at all. Um, I'm, I'm well aware. And it's it's a weird thing because, again, for, for regular media, well, what is he? I think that's part of the reason why. Like when people say, well, has Sportsnet ever talked to you? No. TSN? No. What, what reason would they have... To add me to their programming. That's how I look at it. What would I bring to a panel with Sportsnet or TSN that they don't already have? There's there's nothing really there that I would bring that they don't already have. Not only that, but I live on the West Coast. I can't transplant myself to the East Coast. That's not even possible for us. Even if we wanted to, we really can't. So we're stuck on the West Coast, which is where there's less opportunities. Toronto, yeah, there's more opportunities than maybe. But at the same time, I'm older than 9 out of 10 YouTubers that you'll find. And that also would probably put off some potential employers. So I, I don't have these grandiose dreams that someday I'm going to be on television making all kinds of money doing this. But there's lots of people on YouTube that I think would like to. The interesting thing too to me is that when YouTubers have tried to create a show or to, to transition over to television in any way, shape, or form, very often it doesn't work. It just doesn't. And I've seen, you know, um, I think it was Nikki Glasser is the one I want to mention in this, where uh, a shtick that works in this medium doesn't necessarily work on television. She's the one that occurs to me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enjoy a little bit of a beverage because I just finished 40 minutes talking about hockey and I just did a 16 minutes on this video, which is now on take two. So I'm going to enjoy a little bit of beverage. And I don't have any kind of deal with Coke, so I don't. And I have to get this from the States because they don't have it in Canada anymore because secretly Coca-Cola hates me. Um, so they make sure that any pop I want, I have to go across the border to get. Um, but yeah, it's... The internet celebrity thing is strange, and, and I think there's a, a belief that there's more money in the mainstream. I talked about Emma Blackery in my video a couple days ago, and I, I don't like to feel like I'm picking on her. Uh, but she's she's the one that I follow that tried to do the music thing. Uh, Red Letter Media is one that I follow a lot, too, and every now and then they'll make a movie. And I've never bought the movies because I've never looked at a Red Letter Media movie and said, oh, I, I need that. Because, uh, like, Space Cop. I'm, I don't look at that and go, oh, I, I need the movie with Rich Evans in it. But 
their videos, I watch as many of their videos as I can because I think they're absolutely hilarious. But I don't necessarily think that if they said, okay, we're going to stop doing Best of the Worst, we're going to stop doing all these other videos because we're going to put our money into doing a big Hollywood movie, I don't know that that Hollywood movie wouldn't be a flop. I don't know that if... it Let's let's just say in, in insane realms, Red Letter Media gets to do a Star Wars movie and they, they love Star Wars and, and they tear Star Wars movies apart because they love the original trilogy. I don't know that if they put together a Star Wars movie that it would be any good. And that's... That's where, you know, this whole YouTube celebrity thing is strange. It only works here. And controversy sells here. Uh, I know when, when uh, was it Jake Paul and KSI were going to fight, I, I didn't pay attention to any of that. I didn't care. Uh, but boy, did it ever sell. Did people ever talk about it? And I thought it was really weird. I thought it was bizarre. And, you know, I looked at it and I thought, could I ever see a point where Steve Dangle and I would have a fight? No. No. Myself and any other YouTuber? No. Probably not. Like, no. Absolutely not. Uh, and so that's that's a whole world I don't understand. But again, um, for mainstream media, it's it's strange because this is something completely new and completely different. And And the biggest problem is that there are guys who on YouTube, they can edit together great videos. They know how to be great hosts. And then when you see them in real life and you see them either in a live stream situation or when they don't know the cameras are on, they're complete jerks or they're really, really boring. Uh, one thing that I, I try to make sure, and this is, you know, I don't do the whole video editing. I don't do, I have the studio lighting both in front of me and off to the side here. And once I move into a bigger area with a bigger set, I'm going to make sure I have the widescreen lens on the, the camera, and I'm going to make sure it looks as professional as possible. But I'm, I'm never going to be one of those ones who does the jump cuts and all the ma massive edits, because I want to make sure that when I upload a video, it will be complete with every mistake. It will be complete with, uh, uh, like tonight on the board, there were two or three things I had written down wrong, and I, I left it in. And other YouTubers would have just edited that out. They would have they would have cut right there, and they would have spliced in a, a take where they pick up from there, and and or they would have started from before that that error on the board even showed up. I want to make sure I'm as 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 much myself as possible, because that's how the channel started. So when I see people say, "Well, you know, Shannon, you should you should probably start editing. You're in the big time now, so you should probably start doing things." And here's how I hear here's how I say here's how it sounds to me, Shannon. Now that you have X amount of subscribers, you need to start doing things the way everybody else does. And that's what I heard two and a half years ago, that I need to start doing things the way everybody else did. Um, the In the internet age, uh, everybody can be a video editor. I've got video editing software on this computer. I can do video editing on my phone when I upload a video. Sure. But I, I want to be as genuine as possible in an age where anybody can be famous and for the wrong reasons. And I think where it all started was reality TV. Once Survivor hit television and Richard became a massive star based on the fact that he was a jerk, let's be honest, Richard was just a complete jerk. And then the funny part was he was a big celebrity and then you found out he was a tax dodger and everybody went, oh, well, we liked him when he was a jerk, but now that it turns out he's a jerk, we don't like him anymore. And he just disappeared. It's like, wait, 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 wait. So you all liked him because he was a jerk and he backstabbed everybody. But now that you find out that he's backstabbed the government, you don't like him anymore. Okay. Whereas on YouTube, if a YouTuber did that, there would be, there would be people who would say, good on you. Good on you. So that's changed. And that's changed in my lifetime a few times. And people can be famous for nothing. And internet celebrity is really, really weird that way. I, I, there are YouTubers that if I met them, and, and, and I, I can think of a few, I'm not saying it right now, but if I met them and I know they're, they're stars, I wouldn't be starstruck by them. I'd probably say hi and shake their hand if they come over to say hi to me. I wouldn't go out of my way to say hi to them. And my belief is, I don't know, I don't know how you're popular or how you're successful, but kudos to you. I, I don't know how that works. 
And then there's all the personal drama and all the other stuff. And I know the, the funny thing is, the reason that I initially got a webcam was personal drama in my life. You know, I was suddenly single. So I go out, get a webcam, and just start doing personal vlogs. And then that evolves into this. It's a strange world. But, it, you know, the, the, the drama that goes down, and then you're, you're trying to figure out, well, wait, do I take his word? Do I take her word? Do I take both of them? Or is the story, is the truth somewhere in the middle between these two stories? Who's not telling the truth? Who, like, it, it, it gets frustrating. And then the question you have to ask yourself is, does it really matter? Because there are plenty of celebrities on TV and in music and just in general that we can look back on and go, man, he was a jerk. But he was really popular. We all kind of knew he was a jerk, but we accepted it. So I don't know where this is going to go. Just like with this video. It's kind of tricky to know exactly how to end this. Um, other than I, I would certainly hope that for the, for the people who are... Um, who, who do this for the wrong reasons, who maybe aren't genuine in what they're doing, I, w I would hope that those ones kind of get shown shown up. Uh, one, of the, one of the nice things about doing meetups, one of the reasons why I, I jumped on the idea of doing meetups last summer as much as possible, and that we're doing them when we go to Vegas next week as well, um, is because I, I don't worry. I don't worry that if people meet me in real life, they're going to go, wow, he's a jerk. Wow. Wow. I think I, I think in all of my meetups I know of I the one person who I think had a negative view of me and and it was because I, I think they expected me to to be kind of bigger than life. It it certainly seemed to be that way. And I even asked other people when they said something to me, I said, Did I say something wrong? And they're all like, No, I guess they expected something else. I'm like, oh, okay. Um kind of expected me to take care you know take charge of the whole room rather than just milling about and talking to people and that's what i was doing i was milling about talking to people and they didn't like that they thought i should have just i guess given the speech or something i don't i don't know but it, it was it was one of those things where um i i guess they expected something different based on the channel than what they got but for everybody else it seemed pretty to be a pretty good experience and the fact that a lot of them i ended up being friends with on facebook uh, it's it's that kind of thing that I, I really appreciate and I'm very, very grateful for. So even if everything fell apart and and the whole platform fell apart, I would still have all those friends. I'd still have all those supporters. And I would still find a way to communicate with people every day, whether it's through my podcast or what it's through, I'd figure out a way to communicate with people every day. Because it's, it's fun and it it's, uh, it's an amazing era we live in where basically celebrity isn't what it used to be and the media will do everything they can to tear it down absolutely um and i i think with uh the the whole just all the crap that we have now of so many tabloids that just can't wait for you to fail um the the, the big companies they can't wait for them to fail either so the fact that this is being posted to one of those big companies that People want to see fail. Does it make me nervous at times? Of course. But, you know, you, you make up merchandise, which is also weird. The idea that people want to wear merchandise that has my image on it or a logo on it is just weird to me. But I guess it happens. Uh, that, that helps. And then there's a lot of other ways to sort of diversify the income part of things and try to stay true to myself. So there you go. Uh, just a little... Uh, just a video just based on just how weird I think this whole internet celebrity thing is. And I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Like, does the fact that that, that some that YouTubers are basically just regular Joe Schmoes, 99.9% .9 of us are, uh, does that mean we're held to a higher standard than somebody on television who might be like a Brad Pitt type, or are we held to a lower standard? And, you know, is our humanity part of what makes it work? Or is that what causes problems? Because, yeah, you know, nobody's nobody's perfect. I'm, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. And, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've definitely made some mistakes. If I, had, if I had been a YouTuber, if that had been a thing back in the late 80s, early 90s, I would have been in controversies, too, with things I would have said. Because when you're young, you're kind of stupid. And you say things that are stupid. 
which is why I try to be as, as patient as possible with the comment section, both on my main channel and on here. Because, yeah, people are going to say dumb stuff. It's just when it goes over the line that I say, yeah, that's kind of got to kind of got to get that out of there. Um, which, again, is unusual because YouTube comment sections are kind of known as dog vomit. But there you go. On that note, I think I'll stop her. Anyways, uh, I'd be interested to know what you guys think about this whole weird, strange topic. And uh, I promise you, tons of strange topics on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. I will talk to you again soon. Oh, and uh, I'm still watching Red Dwarf. I'm almost done series two. Oh, I forgot how great that show is. Totally unrelated, but wow, that just amazing. All right, I'm done now.